kids. How are you today? I'm waiting here for Spy Guy. We're supposed to have a meeting. Looks like he's coming. Hey, Joe. Hey, Spy Guy. How are you doing? Yeah, good, man. Hey, real kids. Good to be back with you again this week. My friend Joe and I, we've been staking out here a bit, checking out the, all the books of the Bible like we've been doing. And I think we're just about done. But I think there's just one or two more books you need to know about, and they're really important. So, Joe, tell us about those books, man. Yeah, Spy Guy. There's two books left. One is a history book, and it's called Acts, and another book of prophecy called Revelations. Oh, wow. So, yeah, the book of Acts is all about how the church started after Jesus went back to heaven. And what's most important about that book is that's when God sent her, the Holy Spirit at the day of Pentecost. It's a really important history book called Acts. And then right at the end, my favorite, Revelation. It's like the final book of prophecy about what's going to happen at the end of time. That's like the ultimate spy guy book. Tells us all sorts of things we don't really know. So keep reading your Bible. It'd be great to be with you. Joe and I will just be staking out here a bit longer. See you guys soon. Kids. It's great to be back again with you this week and we're continuing our series called Under Construction where we are looking at different building projects in the Bible and seeing what lessons we can learn from them. Now some of you might know that if you have a building project on builders have very special instructions. This is one set of building instructions it's actually called a blueprint. You can probably tell why. And on this blueprint are very detailed instructions for the builder. So here it says contractor to check soil conditions on site and if necessary obtain a soil test. So there's lots of detail. That is just about the foundation and, and what they need to check underground. And then the rest of it tells them all about building up the walls, the thickness, the different rooms and there's different buildings. There's shopping malls or hospitals or your house. So builders have these very special and important blueprints. And it's a little bit like when you get your Lego out. Now some of you might have a small Lego box and it's just got a few pieces and just by following the picture on the front you can put together the model and you're happy. But there are other very advanced Lego projects that are hundreds of pieces and very complicated. And unless you are following the instructions that come with the Lego, then you are going to end up in a lot of trouble. You're not going to end up with a battleship or an aeroplane or whatever it is. You're going to end up with something that looks very strange. And so that's what we're talking about today. That if in our life we don't follow our blueprint for life, if we don't follow our instructions that God has given us, we can end up in a lot of trouble. No, 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 no. So Noah, yes, our talk is about Noah today. Noah was God's friend. He walked with God, he talked to God, he listened to him. Which, I know you've heard of lots of people like Noah, but it was very strange at this time because no one else on the earth, apart from Noah's family, listened to God. They were doing their own thing. And as God looked down on his people and saw what they were doing, he became very, very upset and very angry. He watched the corruption, he watched the death and the destruction, and he knew that he was going to have to do something to end it. He couldn't allow his earth to continue to destroy themselves and he needed to wash it clean, he needed to make it new. He had to go to battle against sin. But of course God wanted to save Noah. Noah loved God. Noah was God's friend. But Noah would have to listen very carefully for God's instructions. And they were quite detailed. It was almost like he gave Noah a blueprint. If you read in the Bible, Noah 
was asked by God to build an enormous ark, a huge boat, where he and his family and two of every single animal, reptile, bird, insect, everything across the face of the earth, two of those would be housed, would be put so that they were safe because God was going to send a flood. And so Noah called his two sons and they worked carefully and patiently, checking in with God as to what they needed to do. But as they were doing this, everyone around them took delight in making fun of them. They would laugh at them, they would call them names, they would tell them they were stupid. You see, they didn't listen to God and they had no idea that this flood was coming. They lived in a desert, so it probably did look strange. They were far from the sea, and it had been forever since they had seen a rain cloud in the sky. But Noah believed God, and as he worked away with his sons, he pleaded with his neighbors to change their ways, to listen to what he was telling them, to believe what God said was true but they would have none of it. They weren't going to listen, and they thought that Noah and his family were a joke. Well, eventually that day came, and God said to Noah, it's time, go into the boat. And as they went in, the rain came down. And for 40 days and 40 nights, it rained, and it rained, and everything on the face of the earth was destroyed. But then on the 40th day, just as God had promised, the rain stopped. And as Noah looked out and they began to see land and the water went down, Noah was so thankful. The first thing he did, the Bible tells us, is he thanked God for keeping his promise and rescuing his family. Now the first thing that God did was make another promise. And he promised Noah and his people that never again would he destroy the earth. And just like a warrior that's been at battle, God took his bow and his arrow and he hung it up in the sky for everyone to see. And he said, I promise that I will never destroy my people again. And his bow was made of the most beautiful colors, the most beautiful light. Children, it was a rainbow. Now we see those, don't we? Even now when there's been a big storm, we see rainbows in the sky because God's promise is still true. He is still faithful to that promise and he will never again flood the entire earth. We read in Revelations that the heavenly throne is encircled by a rainbow made of the most exquisite jewels because God's promise is eternal. And so Noah and his family went out from the ark and they released all the animals and they went out and they were fruitful and they multiplied and they covered the face of the earth, filled the earth with, with animals and people just like God had instructed them. But we know, don't we, children, that this story is in Genesis, right at the beginning of the Bible. And we have story after story after story of how still people stopped listening to God. They turned away. They didn't want to hear what he was telling them. He didn't want to hear their warnings. They wouldn't listen to the prophets. And so the story of Noah is a picture of a rescue, another rescue that God would have to do. And it was going to be after another very different 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, when Jesus wrestled between his will and God's. Would he do what God told him, like Noah? Or would he be like those people and not listen? And that was that battle that was going on in the desert with Jesus. This picture of Noah was a, a picture of the rescue that God was going to have to perform again because his fierce anger once more was going to be released, but not, not against. He was going to take his war bow, 
but he wasn't going to point it at the destruction and the wickedness that was on the face of the earth. God was going to take his war bow and he was going to point it right into the heart of heaven at his son. Because he promised, hadn't he children, that he would never destroy his people again. But we've just celebrated Easter and we see that Jesus was the one who took that punishment. So that just like Noah and his family, we could be rescued. We wouldn't have to face death that we can have eternity with him forever and see that promise in heaven. And so children, this is an amazing story, full of really important lessons. I hope you've already learned something from the story of Noah. And you will keep learning your whole life because the Bible is rich with God's word and his spirit will keep revealing things to us. But the one thing I want to double click on is that God didn't choose Noah because he was an expert craftsman or boat builder. Noah didn't know how to do carpentry. God chose him because his heart was soft. He chose him because he was the one who listened to him and who followed his instructions. You know, it, it um, talks about in Hebrews, there's a hall of faith of all the men and women in the Bible who were faithful to hear God and do what he asked. And Noah is one of them. And it says that he believed and his faith was counted to him as righteousness. So children, I really want you to know that you don't have to be experts at anything for God to choose you. He's not looking at you being the best. He wants you to be the softest, the one who listens the most carefully. He wants you to, to hear what he's saying to you, just like Noah did. And just like builders need a blueprint, need to know what to do and follow the instructions, and they keep those blueprints close by on the building site, God wants us to keep our blueprint for life close to hand. You've heard me over and over again, telling you, keep your Bible deep in your heart. Read it every day. Listen to what God is saying. Ask him to reveal his secrets and his mysteries to you. Because then, just like Noah and the people with him, you will be rescued and you will live for eternity with him in heaven. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that story. Please uh, look on the parent group. There's some crafts there's some pictures you can color there's more things to do but have a great week lots of love bye